So if you've got a storage tank system, people sometimes are interested in finding out about their float switches, how they work, what they do, and how you can adjust them if you want to. So this is a standard float switch. It's got a ball inside, and whenever the float goes up, you can hear a little click there. That's that switch turning on or off, depending on what it does. And when it goes down, it kicks right back on the other way. We put three of these in a storage tank system. The one up here at the top. This just makes the water, water filling of the tank automatic. When the water level gets low, let's say down here around 2,200 gallons on this tank, it turns the pump on. When it fills up, 2,500 gallons, it cuts it off. We've got a reserve on this tank down here around 1,000 gallons. Switch is sitting right here on the inside. When the water level's up here, it's floating, the booster pump runs full speed, no problems. But when the water level gets down around 1,000 gallons, it cuts that booster pump off. That just reserves water for you for later use. Sometimes people want a little more reserve or a little less reserve, depending upon their situation. It's hanging from a pipe up there at the top. You can just simply lower that middle float switch down a little bit or raise it up. Not gonna hurt a thing to do that. And uh, it'll, it'll, if you raise it up, it'll give you a little more reserve. It's gonna give you a little less everyday water, but a little more stored water for backup. If you lower it down, maybe you've got an irrigation system that's running and towards the end of the irrigation cycle, it's getting too low and it's cutting off before it's done. You could lower it down a little bit. We have another switch right at the very bottom. Just before the pump, the booster pump sucks air. There's a switch in there that cuts that pump off. That protects it. Don't mess with that one. If you get it too low, it won't protect that pump. You burn it up, I gotta come out there and sell you a new one. That's basically how a float system works. Now, in most of these, when you see it installed, you're gonna either see it attached to a pipe or you're gonna see a weight attached to it, a little gray cylinder attached to it, about 10 to 12 inches from the switch itself. That's just to hold it in position to where it's there doing its job. You wanna make sure that you have enough travel usually 9 to 12 inches of travel between on and off if you go buy your own float switch there's something you need to know most float switches that are available on the market are designed for septic systems the cylinder is shaped a little differently it's a little skinnier especially here at the throat where it attaches to the hose and when you flip it up and down you won't hear the click it's a mercury float switch and they're actually a better switch they do a better job than these float switches that are mechanical do. However, if they leak, and they do sometimes, then it's going to put mercury into your drinking water. And let me tell you what, you don't want mercury in your drinking water. So use a mechanical float switch for your drinking water. If you are working on your septic system, that's what those mercury float switches are for.